It's been a wild week of moves. Justin Fields going for a sixth rounder. Things have gotten crazy, so we're going to follow up a chaotic Friday stream with a brand new week here. Draft number 35 for me in the best ball season. And of course, we're competing on Underdog's big board, 200K to first place in that one. And lots of things going to be changing around here. And a fun thing that apparently is occurring, our pal Pete Overset in this room as well. So I tried to avoid, it's actually trying to avoid Pete's stream, getting the people in there, trying to avoid uh, some of our, our more over-enthusiastic over regular shall we say we get on this channel I was trying to avoid that as well here so we did avoid that for the most part and it's gonna be me and pete and a bunch of names i don't recognize besides uh, reed spencer here so it should be a fun draft today uh, we are picking of course in the six hole here as you can see on the screen and we'll hopefully get one of the top wide receivers of that one start a zero rb run to make up for zero rb friday where we did hit zero rb but frankly the team could have been better you guys saw that one already shout out to the chat what's good our guy chunk here chunk by the way i don't know how to reach you so i realized chunk gonna be our guest host uh, here on splash play coming up at some point and chunk i don't think on peace deposit in discord and i don't have you on twitter so chunk if you can dm me at chris spags so we can book your spot we got a guy matthew here we got a guy robert griffin the turd here we are pirates Rating the Overzet Empire. Yes, let's let's do our best to, to not embarrass me once again on a peach stream, though completely accidentally, and actually was really trying to avoid <laughs> trying to avoid the both of them. We're picking next though. We'll see what we do. Yeah, no snipe Monday. I mean, look, you don't see Colt Mont ground dogs in here. You don't see poop head in here. So I think we should be okay. Uh, we're gonna make it work though. Indy TKS taking up his sweet time here before I can make my pick. Who will he take? Bijan Robinson coming up, by the way, a 5.7 ADP now. He's moved ahead of Brees Hall. A lot of enthusiasm for that Atlanta offense on social media. The Falcon social media team loving vaguely racist graphics of Kirk Cousins as well. And we do see Bijan go at pick five. I am still happy taking Justin Jefferson at pick six here. I think there's been some negative steam Jefferson's way. People concerned about the QB situation. For me, I still think they're going to end up with a good one. I think Darnold can be fine. Obviously, the acquisition of picks they made over the weekend where they now have a couple first rounders to try to trade up in the first round. Uh, that's definitely going to be something where they can probably get to four, if not to pick five. And if four, you know, the Cardinals might not want to move. They might want to take uh, one of Marvin Harrison or Malik Neighbors. If that's the case. I think the Chargers live to trade at five, though they also need a receiver too. Uh, so we will see, but come hell or high water, I do think Minnesota's going to leave that draft with J.J. McCarthy, so we will see. And if they don't leave with him, frankly, Bo Nix would be a good outcome. There are other QBs they can take later, but it seems like with the acquisition of first-round capital, you got to think they would like to trade that up and get one of the top four, uh, You know, maybe even a Drake May. It's possible they can get there. How are you doing, Specs? I'm doing good. It's been a long weekend here. We had family in town. Family is also vaguely annoying, so uh, persevere here, but a lot going on. A lot going on. I might have to be going to Miami next week. Uh, did I think escape jury duty the first week of April? Because some, one of the answers I gave on the questionnaire uh, apparently disqualified me, <laughs> so I'm hoping that will continue to be the case, uh, but we'll see what happens on that one. Uh, heavy zero RB run here at the turn. Our guy Pete goes with Garrett Wilson. Of course, we've debated Garrett Wilson a lot on here as well. I am sure that Garrett Wilson is uh, going to be viewed positively by Pete and a lot of people out there as well. Aaron Rodgers coming back is going to be better for him. You know, that said, Jets, a lot of rumors right now after they signed Tyron Smith, they can go with a skill position guy. They can go receiver in particular with pick number 10 for them. So uh, that is something with the Jets that could upset Garrett Wilson. Certainly, if you bring in a high target receiver like a Malik Neighbors, like a Brock Bowers, that does sort of hurt the outcome for Garrett Wilson. But obviously, if you're taking wide receivers. You got to get some guys here um, early on. And Garrett Wilson's one of those guys. Streamception, yes, indeed. Adam Drake Crabtree with me, Miami. I'm not going to be there. I'm going to be there for like one day, but I'll, I'll let you know. I'll let you know. Pass those answers along. Which answers? Answers to what exactly? Yes, I'm trying to gain money by not doing drafts with these kids. That's also a smart one, too. Again, you want to be in the softest draft rooms possible. And for whatever it may be, uh, stream drafts are not going to be the softest ones, even if you do welcome the challenge. Uh, like our guy, what's his name? Soul Reaper? I forget what his name is. The guy on Friday who drafts exclusively to have difficult drafts. All right, we have Justin Jefferson here. We can keep going with the, the previous vets of round one all-stars with Devontae Adams. Um, we could go Saquon here for a share that I don't think I'm going to get very often, and it is going to be the day today. Saquon Barkley, come on down. <sighs> Too many positive things floating around right now with how the Eagles want to use him. Some also some things being going around about you know the usage that they had for Miles Sanders, the usage they had for DeAndre Swift in the past. Those were guys that they didn't spend a lot on, guys that they got for near nothing. Swift seemed a little more excited to get him in the mix last year. Another Philly guy uh, grew up in the area. Um, they got him in the mix, but didn't want to give him a lot of targets. That's something where Saquon Barkley is going to get you the targets. Whether those targets are good enough with Jalen Hurts, I don't know. Uh, I also think one thing that quietly 
kind of shows what the Eagles offense is going to be. The move from a Marcus Mariota as backup QB to now Kenny Pickett, who got traded to the Eagles, does seem like that's something reflecting this offense more where you don't need a QB that can run as much and you don't need a Mariota and there's going to do the one-to-one for Jalen Hurts because Jalen Hurts is maybe not going to be running as much or at least not running as much within the scheme of the offense. And that's where it does make sense. You bring in a Kenny Pickett, a guy who can just be kind of a, a passing QB in the flow of things. So uh, I think that bodes well for Saquon. I, I also, again, I'm still not a Saquon guy. He's very inefficient. The workload's going to be as huge as any running back in football. So that's really the main thing here. Would I rather have Bijan? Yes. Would I rather have Brees? Yes. Would I rather have Christian McCaffrey, A-Chan, Kyron, Jameer Gibbs? I think we're getting close with Gibbs and Taylor for me, but um, but Saquon, that's the justification is I'm willing to take him sometimes, which is frankly for Saquon, a tremendous move in the right direction. Uh, let's see. Oinky, yes, I'm a little bit of a piggy here. I will play the gif. I did go running back piggy bright and early on, and that's, that's on me. That's on me. Oink, 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 oink. See any any regulars? Just to be clear, like it's not all regulars. <laughs> it is just a select few that I've noticed have ruined more and more draft rooms. And on Friday, uh, our most controversial stream, one of the most liked streams ever. Also, shout out a lot of new members from that stream, and also our most disliked stream ever because the people who really got butt hurt by that one, who want me to like bend the knee because somebody's watching the YouTube channel. Like, look, I know the difference between good regulars and bad regulars. Been doing this long enough now. You guys who are in here right now, you're good regulars. The guys who we got rid of on Friday adding zero value to me, adding zero value to the process. And those are the guys that for the sake of quality drafts, as well as like wanting to have good teams for myself that come out of this, uh, we got to focus on that stuff as we go. And I'm not afraid to be the bad guy. I'm not going to be the channel here where you come in and I'm going to like hold your hand and kiss your little boo-boos as you fuck up teams over and over again. It's just not going to be it. You got to come in, you come in, you watch Peach streams, you know how to draft the right way. You come in here and you kick my ass on a draft. More power to you. But, you know, not the 20 pick reaches and shit. No mas. No mas. <laughs> Thank Michael Thomas for new subs. Yeah, we lost a few. Lost including him. But uh, yes, and the dislikers can eat a dick. Yes, I agree. On the clock here, though, need some more receivers. Rasheed Rice starting to come down with Marquise Brown being added to the rotation. I'm okay not getting him here. Uh, DK Metcalf getting Lockett back in has made his ADP come down. Malik Neighbors, I think just the general lack of enthusiasm around him has made him come down. Pittman, I still think, is a little bit overvalued, to be honest. I am going to go Malik Neighbors here. I just think with how this draft board in the NFL is shaking out right now, Malik Neighbors is going to go somewhere, be a wide receiver one from day one. Obviously, same thing for Marvin Harrison. I do expect that, and I have expected that for the most part. But in this situation where a lot of guys I feel the most comfortable with are now off the board, I'm willing to take the risk on the young guy. Malik Neighbors, of course, what we've talked about of him, having a high target per out run rate despite having Brian Thomas there, who's already proving to be a freak athlete. Guy is a weapon downfield. Malik Neighbors, also one of the shiftiest backs or shiftiest wide receivers out there who also can play in the backfield, which is a positive too for how these offenses sometimes like to use guys. We always talk about that quest for people to have their own Debo. Malik Neighbors is probably the most Debo coming into the NFL. A little bit smaller for sure, but in terms of the running back, fluidity, movement, ability to make plays out of a backfield. Um, Lake Neighbors is there, and then downfield, he's a monster too, over a 1.5 EPA downfield of those 20-plus air yards. So that's my justification for reaching for Malik Neighbors here. And Rasheed Rice is a guy that I'm not a fan of, and uh, he's coming down. <laughs> and dislike these nuts. Who could ever dislike your nuts, Tyler? Nobody can. Not really on Hollywood. His price seems kind of sky Mori. I think he's fine. I think as long as you're willing to accept the fact that the one of the better outcomes for him is being a more reliable MVS. And if you're okay with that, then I think he's okay in the 60s. If you want to get exposure to him, that's where you're going to get him. But I think the enthusiasm for him is going to be a little bit high. I think that's the main thing is that uh, people have been in the bag for guys like Marquise Brown for a while now. And when they are in the bag for a guy like Marquise Brown, they are going to chase him upwards. And now what is the best situation on paper for him? But what stood out to me was him not being great when he had a chance to be a wide receiver one. We had a chance to make that leap and be more than he was in Baltimore. And I think he could not show that in an offense last year where there were spike weeks for Trey McBride. There were spike weeks for Greg Dortch. There was a spike week for Rondale Moore. Why did Marquise Brown not have one? I think that speaks to his inability to be a wide receiver one. But in Kansas City, he's not going to be that. There's going to be a lot of attention underneath Rasheed Rice. They want him to run the same route tree as Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey's already running the uh, Travis Kelsey route tree. That's going to open things up downfield and Marquise Brown can benefit if he's not ass. Uh, last year, he had, I believe, a 50% catch rate downfield, which is one of the worst marks in the league for a guy that we think is actually pretty good uh, or that you know a lot of people think is actually pretty good. So uh, for me, for Brown, I think there are a lot of flaws in the profile and, uh, you know, Kansas City cleans up a lot of those warts for sure. Yeah, Marquise Brown last year, 
23% target route run rate, as we mentioned before, negative 0.1 EPA per target, which is not great for a downfield receiver. Actually, a 30% target rate or catch rate downfield. So um, particularly bad downfield, negative 0.3 EPA there, and a 50% catch rate overall for Marquise Brown, despite an dot of only 12.4 air yards, which certainly higher. Anytime you're talking about past the sticks on average, it's on the higher end, but there's guys who had better catch rates, like George Pickens. Let's see what Pickens' catch rate was. Was arguably worse QB play. Yeah, Pickens had a 59% catch rate with a higher A dot three t- uh three the oh, fuck 13.9 air yards per attempt. Sorry guys, it was a long weekend. And uh 0.7 EPA per target as well for Pickens, along with a 46% catch rate. So like I think those guys are very similar players, and Pickens was better. I like Pickens more, but if in terms of how they're viewed, I think they're similar players. And uh for Marquise Brown, like there are flaws in the game. All right, so we have Saquon, we have Jefferson. As I've mentioned before, I have no issue buying in on the Chicago offense. I think that if we're going to say that DJ Moore and Keenan Allen can pay off these ADPs, probably means a good year for Caleb Williams. I don't mind the steam on Derrick Henry, but we got one we got one aged running back. So we'll go with an aged wide receiver instead and take Keenan Allen here. Chargers former, perhaps Chargers upcoming with Malik Neighbors. We'll find out. Looked like he lost a step, but I could be wrong. I mean, look, it's possible. He's had a lot of foot injuries, foot injuries for a guy who is a burner. You know, if that shaves off 0.5 of your time, your pure, you know, 40 time, it's not great. But you know, again, it's about the Kansas city of it all. If you're making a bet on Marquise Brown, I think you should be willing to make a bet on Kansas city. And, you know, and frankly, just making a bet on Marquise Brown as a proxy bet for Kansas city. Like they won the super bowl. They won the super bowl with a lot less talent than they'll probably have this year. And that's definitely a positive thing. I would think uh, for a guy like Marquise Brown coming in might help Mahomes more. I think that's fair. I think Mahomes probably benefits a bit more from just being able to throw those 50 yard targets to last year. They were going to MVS and Justin Watson. Like I think Brown can get slightly more open and catch slightly more than those guys. Actually, you know what? Just for fun's sake, uh, let's see. What was the catch rate downfield for Valdez Scantling? Valdez Scantling, a 20% catch rate downfield. So again, compared to 30% for Marquise Brown last year. And then Justin Watson, got to be even lower, right? No, Justin Watson, ooh, that's not great. Justin Watson had a 40% catch rate downfield last year, so technically was better in terms of just getting the targets and making them work than Marquise Brown. He also had a point, 0.22 EPA downfield. So, look, if Brown can be as efficient as Watson was, I think that's a good sign for him. But, you know, being as efficient as Justin Watson is not something you give some guy a medal for. So I think for Marquise Brown, that's how I view him. Best situation, but the reason he's getting steamed up is because people have loved him for five years now, and that's sometimes how it goes. Marquise Brown helps the Sharps get better value in round six. Sure, sure. And to be clear, like I'm sure on stream and in general, I'll take some Marquise Brown shares when it aligns in the right way. And that's how I feel about these guys. That's why you know, on Friday as well, we we're talking about Derrick Henry. And it's like, if you're reaching for Derrick Henry at pick 29 or something, it's not a great move because people have been getting him in the 50s. And now his ADP is in the 30s. And you can still get him. I mean, you see he's was on the board here at pick 44. It's like, you don't reach for guys that are going to be coming up meaningfully, but you take them at ADP. So if you still want Marquise Brown, fine, just take them when he aligns in the board, but don't go reaching 10 picks for him because now you're making a potentially bad mistake even worse. And that's you know, one of the flaws in draft process that I see a lot, uh, frankly, especially from the guys that we got rid of on Friday. Um, and that ruins an entire room. So, you know, that is what it is. Another wide receiver pocket coming up here. We have some guys I like a good amount. The aforementioned George Pickens here, Jaden Reed, who we also like, Cooper, who frankly I have no issue with either, and McLaurin, who I think is undervalued. So we're leaving with somebody good to this pick no matter what. <sighs> I like McLaurin too much. And also, I want to get more McLaurin, Jaden Daniels shares together. So that's what we're going to do. And frankly, a shot that these two guys play in week 17 with Saquon Barkley, Terry McLaurin. So my team so far, Saquon at running back, one of my rare times I will take him. Three picks after ADP is a justification, but you know, it's just the role. It's just the Eagles. It's just that offense. And I'm getting a shot to roll up a couple years of rolls now into one uh, for the Eagles, that is. Justin Jefferson, Malik Neighbors, Keenan Allen, and Terry McLaurin at wide receiver. So four wide receivers start. Our one running back deviation, and we'll see what we get on the way back. Division correlation, yummy, yummy. Thank you. Tyler, I have to ask, are you doing both draft rooms at once? Because I saw you, I was watching Pete stream a little bit before hopping on my stream, and Tyler was in there making some his usual barbs and jokes. So I'm wondering if he's showing love to both of the dads <laughs> at the same time as Pete and I in the same draft room. I was kind of hoping that I could push AR all the way back. Didn't seem likely, but he goes at 57. I think it's a Chris G, so fine pick there. 
And Pete here drafting some Baltimore stuff along with his Garrett Wilson. Fine team for Pete as usual. Was that about 55% Mark Hollywood Brown at pick 110? Even got a few Mahomes Brown sacks. There you go. That's the move. Like, that's the thing. And that's the part that I think, again, a lot of people miss here is like, yes, when ADPs move, when that new ADP is there, you got to take that guy where you can get him. But for the big board, that's now 60% fold. You have guys like Eric who were chasing that part months ago. And frankly, like guys like Eric might have also been chasing uh, Joe Mixon at a cheaper ADP, Derek Henry at a cheaper ADP. So when you take all these guys coming up together in one team, you're likely giving your shot a better chance, your, your team a better shot of being duped multiple times over by guys who just got these players much better values. So for the big board in particular, that's the thing you have to be mindful of. In BBM, it's kind of the same thing, but for the big board, we're like, I know there are a lot of sharp drafters who maxed out already, did all 150. Those guys were probably just building teams, trying to get Joe Mixon in the 80s, trying to get Kamar in the 80s, trying to get Henry in the 80s, trying to get all these guys who just came up because of the you know uncertainty that became certainty. And that's a thing that I think for the big board that um, you can miss pretty easily if you are just chasing guys up left and right. Guys like Eric are the proof. And a good way for Eric too, like good for his portfolio. I think for me, you know, one of the biggest flaws in my process, especially for a big board, is like I fall in love with these young guys. I fall in love, especially with the ones who analytically I think um, look incredibly sound. And and this year in particular, especially compared to last year, you know, like last year there's a real advantage in like targeting those guys early and just riding them and riding them and riding them because the ADPs didn't move. For this year, combine made ADPs move exponentially in general, a lot of the sharp guys as well, or a lot of the guys who were quote unquote sharp plays got kind of steamed up as well, just because of people out there like legendary upside, like a lot of these sharp people on social media who then, you know, kind of high of mind around these guys and they come soaring upward as well. So um, I think that for the big board, you know, the best way to play it. And as a reminder for myself, as much as you guys next year is just to soak up any uncertainty, to soak up any guys where it's like, there has been a news item that's been positive in a little bit. Um, and even the end of season run guys that just ran bad Stefan Diggs, we saw he was going reliably in the mid thirties for a while. Now he's back to 23. You know why? Because like level heads have kind of prevailed there and also Gabe Davis left. That doesn't hurt either. Uh, but that's really the main thing there is that the uncertainty is just a thing with ADP is that. Uncertainty versus certainty, one of the biggest drivers of everything. All right, we have a 040140 here. I think Addison makes sense for the team. I also believe that a lot of people in my spot would take Addison. So there could be a logic in going Calvin Ridley here and trying to make trying to make a bet on the Titans a little. But I think fundamentally in this one, I'm making a bet on Minnesota. So I am going to go Jordan Addison's way. I still like him. I think an just frankly, the, the jump from year one to year two going to be positive. And four, whether it be J.J. McCarthy, whether it be Sam Darnold, Darnold the last time we saw him was a actually a really efficient QB um, in terms of how he played in, on the Carolina Panthers before he got moved over to the Niners. And he spent another year with a good coaching staff where I think they've coached Brock Purdy, coached every inch out of him about as well as he can. So for Darnold, I think if he's the starting QB for a while, that's fine. And then if it's J.J. McCarthy at the end of the year, that's fine too. And I would say for the sake of a stack, I'm probably not willing to take Darnold just because I don't think he holds on to the job all year. Or if it's a probability thing, I think it's like 70, 30. He doesn't hold on to the job for the whole year. So for this kind of team, that is one flaw, I guess, is that we're probably not going to be able to capture that early season QB production because I don't think McCarthy wins the job outright. If I had to guess he comes in as like the great white hope after Sam Darnold has a three pick day, that would be my guess right now. Fields ADP in Hollywood. So yeah, we saw Hollywood. Fields is now down to the 140s, I think. Uh, well, he's getting drafted in the 140s, 150s, but his ADP is still 125.9. So uh, not a good reflection there. We haven't talked about Fields enough. Uh, as I mentioned before, the contract he gave to Russell Wilson felt kind of like a fall guy contract. And I guess the potential fall guy was not Kenny Pickett. The potential fall guy was Justin Fields that you can have... Wilson sit, you could take him at any point you want and go to the other guy. And with fields, the big issue is that he can't play over 51% of the QB snaps because that would trigger a bonus. So he's probably not going to be playing more than half the year, but at a certain point, if Russ is complete ass and they go to fields, like that might just happen and the Steelers start winning games. They'll probably happily pay out that bonus. Uh, but I would say for the Steelers right now, the assumption you should make is that Russell Wilson starts the season fields comes on late. And if, you know, relative to ADPs, like that probably means that fields, I think goes in Daniel Jones range and, you know, that's that's not that's not their price point. Fields has had one of the wildest swings where he had that one stretch where uh, his agent calling him on social media uh, made everybody think he was going to Atlanta. And, you know, I think that was worth buying a little bit at that point would have been one of the best possible outcomes for him. And now it's like, OK, we have the absolute flip side of it. So if you're one of those people that was reaching for fields very early on, that's a tough one. Um, ADP sensitivity in the big board, like really just crucial overall. All right. On the clock here. 
0150. I think we've done an okay job managing pockets so far. Nothing correlation coming up, but we can target again another potential week 17 thing with Detroit. So David Montgomery, come on down at running back. Uh, we will pair him again. Maybe a shot that he plays Minnesota week 17. Maybe a shot he plays Chicago week 17. Could play, could play Washington week 17. We don't know, but I like Montgomery. Six picks after ADP here. And the team so far, Saquon, David Montgomery at running back, Justin Jefferson, Malik Neighbors, Keenan Allen, Terry McLaurin, and Jordan Addison wide receiver. I don't know. I don't hate this team. It's not like all the fun guys, but we got a good mix of fun guys and guys who I think are appropriately valued a little bit under. So we're okay with that. Oh, Dan. Well, you're going to get me on this one. <laughs> what is this? Oh, gosh. Uh, let's see. What would be your my Deontay slash Pickens flag pant list here? So like last year, you mean saying me taking Pickens over Deontay? Um, I don't know that I have one yet this year. Like Ridley Hopkins would be a similar one, but I think those guys are kind of one-to-one -one plays for the most part. I, I think they're both a little bit undervalued. Just buying in on an offense is importing a lot of principles from Cincinnati. Um, so I would say maybe that could be similar. Um, yeah, McLaurin doesn't really have a guy either. McLaurin, of course, one of the bigger stands for me. Yeah, I can't say one comes to mind. Somebody might know, honestly, in the chat more, a thing that I defend similarly uh, to Pickens versus Deontay last year, but... Uh, nothing jumps out. I feel like it would have to be something where one receiver is meaningfully better than the other, and I expect that to hold again, and I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Deontay Johnson might do with Adam Thielen did last year with Bryce. Yeah, I mean, Johnson now is a much better pick than he was last year, to be honest. Like, I'm okay with Johnson pretty much anywhere. Like, you could take Johnson ahead of Chris Godwin. I wouldn't be mad at it. I've mentioned this before. Um, I would probably take... Hmm. I'd probably take Marquise Brown and Brian Thomas ahead of Deontay Johnson still do you think that Brian Thomas gets an outcome that's going to be positive for him uh, because he's such a great downfield receiver, probably the best one in the class, even though Mitchell has some merits too with the combine stuff with the RAS and all that. Uh, but I do, but you know, Brian Thomas has him too, and he played better competition and did better with it. So um, really, I don't think there's a lot of bad picks in this range. Like Godwin to me is the one that I effectively think is a bad pick. And frankly, this guy took two of them. I don't think JSN's a great pick right now. I don't think Godwin's a great pick right now. Uh, but this range in general, all these other guys I'm pretty comfortable with. My stand is estimate over everyone. I mean, look, if estimate is the Cowboys back, I'd rather have them than Braylon Allen. I can tell you that much. Uh, but Braylon Allen, big bodied guy, young guy. Those are the positives going for him. Estimate, an actual runner and producer. But sometimes actual runners and producers, if they run a 4.72, uh, like Estime did at the Combine, sometimes they end up in the UFL. So that's the risk point for a guy like Estime, but we'll see. All right, coming up here, Swift goes, so we won't get him. Not that that was necessarily a thing I was going for, but wouldn't have been the worst thing in the world. Uh, 0250 here. Yeah, we could do a bunch of different things. <sighs> should Eckler and Brian Robinson be flipped? I kind of think they should. I also, frankly, don't mind Duncan home Christian Watson here. One more correlation. Let's do it. Christian, who am I? Who am I? I'm I'm Chris Staggs, the guy that loves Christian Watson. That's who I will continue to be for now. Uh, Christian Watson will be our sixth wide receiver here. I think we got like the running back start I like enough that I'll push running back down. And frankly, again, NFC North. We got Watson now with Minnesota. We got Chicago here. It works. Christian Watson's price tag is not come up meaningfully, which I think is fair. We do know he's got, you know, even in half point PPR, 20 fantasy point per game upside. And, you know, not going to happen every game for sure. You're going to get some of those fives. You're going to get some of those six and sevens and you might get injury. But if we're willing to buy in on the positive here, Christian Watson, a guy who's been good year one, less good year two, but still showed pretty big flashes heading into year three with Jordan Love being good for an entire year. They're going to be a positive. You know, the downside is that Reed's going to get better. Wix is going to get better. Dobbs should theoretically get better. Musgrave's going to get better. Um, everybody's going to get better. And then you also have Josh Jacobs taking some more touches away. So that could be tough. So your price is spicy, but I don't hate it. It's just so likely they're going to bring in somebody else at running back that at pick 94, I think that's wrong. He shouldn't go around these guys. Where he was going before, I think was a little bit of an undervalue. This is a little bit too high. I would say for Zamir, you should settle in the 110s range. I don't think you should go before Brian Robinson. That much I can tell you. 
Our guy Sammy here, going to rewatch later. Appreciate that. Of course, whether you're watching live or after the fact, we do appreciate you guys here, especially, you know, when you're not one of the weirdos who ruins every draft room. <laughs> so please subscribe down below. Please hit the like button. Again, here doing drafts every day, Monday to Friday at 11 a.m. Uh, that is the goal here on Splashway. No matter what we're going up against, I show up here, I do the work, and you can agree with the takes, you can disagree with them. But ultimately, I'm going to give you the best take that I can based upon the info that we have out there, based upon all the rumor and innuendo. And again, the experience we're doing this multiple times, having multiple finalist teams on underdog and DraftKings in these big tournaments. So, so I'm fucking some guy over the weekend left me one of the most annoying comments ever. He was like, he speaks with such conviction, like about me on the splash stream on Friday. He speaks with such conviction. It's disturbing. Like he hasn't even won best ball mania. I'm like, <laughs> if that's the metric, <laughs> like, I don't know what we could fucking do. No guys, I'm not one best ball mania, but I think finishing top 200 on the big tournaments for two straight years on different sites, is like a pretty cool thing. Uh, but that guy disturbing, like, the overreaction on YouTube to people when they when they like don't get what you're doing or don't like you is immense. But that's why we just show up here and we worry about who's in the building for real. <laughs> and that's, that's how the game goes. I'm going to add Brian Robinson here. I think you can make the case for Eckler at this point, a discount. But I believe that Robinson should have a higher ADP than Eckler because Robinson is probably going to still be the goal line back. Going to be the back they go to if they ever have an advantage in the game. Whereas Eckler is going to be a check down back with likely a mobile QB around him. So I think it's not a great thing for Brian Robinson. Or excuse me, for Austin Eckler. It is a great thing for Brian Robinson. Betting on Spags is here. Thank you. I appreciate that. Watch every day, usually on the way home from work. Keep up the great work. Thank you. I appreciate that. Look, the real regulars know who they are. The guys who are coming in just because they want to be get their username on a stream, like, I just don't need it. So that's ultimately the way Splashway is going to go moving forward. But you guys who are the real regulars here, you guys especially who signed up and, and hit the join button after Friday's video, like, you guys are the real ride or die. So I'm always going to care about, number one, good content for you guys, and number two, like, me building good teams. Those are the two things that I've heard prioritize, but there's not going to be a best ball stream for everybody. And ultimately I accept that, uh, you know, not going to be fantasy fuck. I'm not going to tell you the things you want to hear about how every running back who was good 10 years ago is going to be good again. Like that's not what the channel will ever be. I <laughs> love to tell people to eat shit sexually. <laughs> Should we tell these people to eat shit in the car? Oh, that's where it's coming from. Sexually. <laughs> that's the same question, but yeah, you know, whatever. It's fine. I usually just get rid of them. Cause it's like, if you're not ever going to contribute to the channel, it's like, I don't, you know, this doesn't need to be a channel for everybody. We can have fun without it being a 30,000 view per video channel. So I'm cool with that. So here's my highest drafted running back, Glad highest drafted wide receiver, Brock highest on tight end. I have a type. Yeah, Georgia guys. Uh, big for our guy, Adam, of course, our, our UGA fan in the crowd here does a good job. Um, yeah, for Zamir White, look, I just think the thing for him is he played pretty well last year. I think earned some trust with a team that, frankly, probably more of an earning trust team than most of the NFL with a guy like Antonio Pierce, who said stuff. He did the things after. He said, we're going to get Josh Jacobs such as we're going to we're going to feed Devontae Adams at a certain point. He said, like, these are the things that he actually did follow through with. So if they don't bring in somebody good, it'll be good for Zamir. If they bring in Jonathan Brooks, if they bring in Trey Benson, if they bring in Bucky Irving, if they bring in Aldrick Estime, I think all those guys are potentially better running backs than Zamir White. So that'd be the concern point. But he played well. I think the job will be Zamir's to lose. Running back class likely to produce a lot of busts. Maybe. Maybe. Ah, oh, these motherfuckers taking Troy Franklin. <laughs> this Pete Overzet character took my guy, Troy Franklin. A good pick by Pete here at 110. Uh, Trey Franklin, again, undervalued as a guy who now any team has access to him is one of the upsides for Trey Franklin. That's something too, where like for Marvin Harrison, for elite neighbors, it's only a select group of teams that can get him. For Trey Franklin, he could go to Kansas City and that would greatly upset the outlook for Marquise Brown. He can go to Buffalo and that would greatly upset the outlook for Curtis Samuel, for Cleo Shakir, and to a lesser extent for Stefan Diggs. Uh, so for Trey Franklin, I think there are some positives for him and that's that he's just not going to be priced uh, like the other guys who are going to get very frothy. Lie to me and tell me to take Saquon at 101. <laughs> if you're taking him there, it's just the Christian McCaffrey level workload on a, on a team that's good. Like, that's it. So I'm, I'm okay doing it if you want to do it. Uh, I have no issue with that. All right, so we are going to take Caleb Williams here. Of course, we do have our little bet on Keenan Allen. We have our little bet on the uh, NFC North overall. So Caleb Williams, once again, if you take Keenan Allen at ADP, if you take DJ Moore at ADP, you are making a bet on Caleb Williams. Whether you realize it or not, that is a bet on Caleb Williams being there, being good from day one, and also being a pro-level QB like a CJ Stroud was last year. And this is a comment, well, that we got recently, which was not, <laughs> not a banned comment. It was just somebody, like I think, who had the wrong take with it. who was like, a rookie QB coming in and creating value for multiple guys. It's like, 
of any year to say that. We just saw that this past year where CJ Stroud made Tank Dell the best possible rookie outcome he could have. CJ Stroud made uh, made Nico Collins the best pro outcome he's had by like a wide margin. We're talking for Nico last year. I think he finished, what, a .55 EPA? Yeah, 0.55 EPA per target for Nico compared to where he was the year before. I think he was a negative 0.1 per target. That's a massive leap in your efficiency and your production overall. Uh, so for like, you know, for anybody who's worried about the Bears and Caleb Williams, we just saw it happen. And I, and I think we have a couple situations here. Caleb, Jaden Daniels, to a lesser extent, and Drake May, and to a lesser, lesser extent, JJ McCarthy. All those guys can create value for the offenses around them because they are pro level QBs. Bo Nix, too, I would put again, like, you know, the fifth of, of that one. He's got the uh, least draft capital. So that's the tough part there. That's right. Made Noah Brown look good, too. Noah Brown was just an, like an also run vet free agent, and he was good enough last year that Houston's bringing him back as part of what they're doing. Like, a I think people really just, the rookie thing, the gap from rookie to pro now is smaller than ever, especially for these guys that played real composition in college, because all these guys are just playing flag football for the most part. And the NFL is, you know, you're still taking big hits, but like, it's more like flag football now than ever. So really for these guys, the bar coming in is so much lower. And for guys like Caleb Williams, I mean, you can watch him. We can talk about some of the flaws and all of that in his game, the catchable ball rate being under 70%, not something that's great for him but he looks like Mahomes eye test wise with a little more mobility, a little more willingness to get after it and create some hits, create some contacts and take hits as well in the pocket. And I think for Caleb, uh, these are things that we look for in a pro QB willing deep ball thrower creates value out of nowhere. Made Brandon Rice look like a superstar. You know, we're going to do it. And he is going to do this year. Go Colts. I hope so. I mean, I know that he's going to make like, out, like outlier wide receiver value. He's going to make outlier fantasy production for you for sure. But, you know, I don't expect him to, to make a team better day one like Caleb does. Uh, we have the bet on Washington here. So there's a Jane Daniels draft. If we got sniped spitefully by someone in chat last week, <laughs> this week we get our Washington bet. So we have a bet on Chicago with Caleb Williams. We have a bet on Washington with Jane Daniels. Uh, the two or two of the best receivers with it. Uh, DJ Moore, I think will benefit probably a little bit more than Keenan Allen from day one, but I like the team and we can take JJ McCarthy late, all QBs, rookies, potentially uh, it's in play here. I think May is my second fave guy from a making those around him better standpoint. It, it should be Jaden. Like Jaden's just such a good passer at every level. Jaden also, again, runs enough where that that'll hurt the running back targets a little bit, but I think in terms of an overall offense, having the threat of Jane being able to break a long play, not that Drake may can't Drake may can too. But again, I've talked about it a lot here. When you see a guy's numbers and rushing come down for, for Drake may the year before he was going to be in the draft to the year that he was going to be in the draft. Those numbers came down. He ran like five less times per game. I don't think that's the guy that I want to pin the rushing hopes on. Whereas Jaden is going to run out there. He's going to get steamrolled sometimes. He's going to make it happen. Uh, Caleb, I think too, is probably going to end up in the pros running five, six times a game, which is probably where I expect Drake may to end up. So I'd rather have Caleb. I'd rather have Jaden and but Drake may is fine too. Most willing deep ball throw in the class is not something that I would sneeze at. Uh, the, the willingness to throw deep balls is one of the biggest parts you should be looking for in fantasy. And Drake may had a, I think a 20% deep ball rate. Uh, definitely higher than everybody else in the class, but let me confirm. Yeah, Drake May had a 17% deep ball rate compared to 15 each for Caleb and Jane Daniels. So not the biggest. And then uh, and JJ McCarthy, for comparison's sake, 13% deep ball rate, Bo Nix a 10% deep ball rate. So that's where we see the difference between guys who are the offense and guys who are vessels for the offense. And for Drake May, for Jane Daniels, for Caleb, those guys are the offense. Uh, from McCarthy for Knicks, those guys are vessels of an offense. At least in terms of how I view it. Fun draft. You look, we had to show off here for all the Pete Overzet fans <laughs> watching the stream, but actually supposed to catch up with Pete tomorrow. So we'll see. Hopefully we can figure out some stuff with Splash Play moving forward too, just in general, what the uh, what the outlook is for that stuff. But there we go. Pete getting rookie crazy here, taking Jalen Wright along with Troy Franklin. And he gets the Trevor Lawrence discount for himself as well, which... I'm sure feels pretty decent. Cole Komet coming the wrong way right now. And frankly, mm, I think we can push. I'd rather make my running back room better and go Jerome Ford here. Because frankly, like if I lose out of Cole Komet, I'm not going to die about it. Would like to get Cole Komet, but I don't need it. So 
Team so far, I'll give it a read before we go to the turn. Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels are top two QBs expected to be drafted at QB. And running back, Saquon Barkley, David Montgomery, Brian Robinson, Jerome Ford. And wide receiver, Justin Jefferson, Malik Neighbors, Keenan Allen, Terry McLaurin, Jordan Addison, and Christian Watson. Really like that wide receiver room. I think we, we stuck that one. Running back room, if Saquon's going to be what everybody else in the world who's not me wants him to be, it's a good pick as well. So Saquon there. Cole Komet goes to Blue List. Uh, Blue List needed a second tight end. What are you going to do? I think I've seen Cole Komet go in the 150s, 160s enough that I was willing to push that. But it is what it is. Jerome Ford falling, going to get him all the way. Why? Like, why is he falling? Like, nothing has happened. They added Jerry Judy. <laughs> like, is that? I don't think Cleveland's done anything. Even there haven't even been good, like, Nick Chubb reports. And, and that's the biggest thing for him is if Nick Chubb somehow are good to go week one, that helps Jerome Ford. But more likely, Jerome, uh, Nick Chubb's going to start the year on the pup list. So Jerome Ford, to me, at pick 139, tremendous. And he was a guy that had real spike weeks last year, even with Kareem Hunt getting the goal line work. So Jerome Ford, to me, at 139. Would rather have him than Gus, or rather have him than Jalen Wright, for sure. Curtis Samuel starting to come up a little bit, though frankly not enough for a guy who got the deal he did from Buffalo. People love Buffalo. Don't get why there's not a lot of steam going Samuel's way. He goes at 145 here. Russell Wilson at 146, probably not a great pick at this point, given the fact that you are expecting Justin Fields to take over at some point there. So, but he goes in the 140s here. Oof, I'd much rather pay the price tag I did for Caleb and Jane Daniels than to take Russ there personally. But that is me. All right, 2460. We have the bet on Minnesota, so we could go Ty Chandler for a little increased correlation there. Could go up at tight end and get a tight end that I think is pretty good. Marshawn Lloyd, I don't mind here. Mims to be my wide receiver. Seven would not look bad either. But running back's going to get bled out. Running back is going to get bled out. I'm going Mims. I think Mims, to me, locks this team up really nicely. Oh, is that? Oh, okay. There we go. That makes more sense. That's Roman Wilson. Okay. <laughs> my apologies. Still, you shouldn't take Russell in the 140s no matter what. All right, so my logic here for taking Mims instead of another running back. Number one, I think there's a shot we might be able to push running back a little here. And number two, I just think Mims is a pure spike week guy whose role is so much better now. I don't think he should be a discount in drafts ever. I really don't believe that. Because given that Sean Payton within the last month has said the blocker for Mims getting playing time has been Jerry Judy. That blocker is gone. Maybe they add somebody else. QB play, definitely a concern for that team because we don't know what they're doing yet. It's only Jared Stidham so far. Uh, but for Denver, I just think Mims has got a better outlay no matter what happens for him. So Mims at 150, happy to do it. No, no. <laughs> Why? Shut up. I don't... <laughs> I don't want you guys in my draft now. Honestly, men for life, Jay, the regulars here who stay out of the way for the most part who draft like sharp drafters, you're good. But don't don't anticipate it though, because like I'm not I'm not starting at 11 o'clock here at any point anymore now. Like it's, that's just how it has to be after that Friday stream. So you're gonna have to earn it to get in splash play draft rooms. But again, we show up every day Monday to Friday, 11 a.m. So you get your shots. You just gotta probably be in a draft. <laughs> you gotta be willing to answer a couple drafts at once. So the 28-year-old coming back from brutal multi-ligament that will structure his contract and Ford still the pass back. Yeah, look, I think Chubb being back to what he was, once was, and Chubb is one of few guys here that overall, like I really believe that he was one of the best pure analytic running backs in football the last few years. But now he's getting older, now coming off the knee injury. Like no matter what, there's a case to take a Jerome Ford, but with him also missing the early part of the year, uh, I think there's a lot of reason for Ford. And Ford can earn a role. Like Ford can, Ford can absolutely earn a role in the pass game. And frankly, just the guy that takes some pressure off of Chubb, where Chubb coming off of him, you know, multi-knee injury, multi-part knee injury can be something for him where um, he probably shouldn't get 20 touches in a game anymore. And that was his biggest value, was being that good at that many touches. I don't think he's going to get that many touches anymore. What, what is this? Get out of here. <laughs> I'll start at different time periods. Don't, don't try to predict it for your own sanity. 2470, but it's going to be around 11 no matter what. But all right, but I would guess on the earlier side, if I were you. 2470 here. I mean, I think we're good at receiver. We're going to have to make up volume at tight end later. Marshawn Lloyd for RB5, given that we passed up on Ty Chandler. I'm okay with it. Uh, so we have the bet, the early season bet on these guys Saquon, Montgomery, Brian Robinson, Ford. 
I guess you could make the case that Brian Robinson more of a late season bet, but if I had to imagine, we're talking probably he is the hammer back that will have you know carries whenever Washington's in the lead. Austin Eckler is going to work in as kind of a change of pace, power run kind of back guy. Um, zone runs, I think, will be a little bit more in Eckler's wheelhouse. But in general, I like this running back room. And at wide receiver, Justin Jefferson, Malik Neighbors, Keenan Allen, Terry McLaurin, Jordan Addison, Christian Watson, and Marvin Mims. And this is at least a three tight end build now, if not four, and a 20-round draft. So we'll figure that out later. And here's Russell Wilson actually getting drafted <laughs> at 164. Not that fake Russell Wilson, Roman Wilson, who went at 146. Probably an unpopular opinion, but I think Peyton's very overrated as a coach, and Denver could end up an absolute shit show if they miss a QB. <sighs> I don't, I don't know that I would say he's overrated because there is certainly a skill with what he's done in the past. It's obviously a little bit overrated to the present. I guess to be the main thing. He has to prove it again. I think a lot of times that's the biggest issue with these coaches that have had Super Bowl wins, have had, you know, 10 years being dubbed the boy genius kind of thing. And they kept doing it and keep, you know, kept fielding competitive teams for the most part. But for him, I don't know that he has the work ethic and the ability to adapt and to be a guy that can, you know, be with this next wave where whatever flaws Mike McCarthy has, you know, and again, they showed their ugly head in the early part of last year. He figured it out again in stream last year that we're just going to drop back, pass a lot, do the high analytics thing, even though he hired an offensive coordinator that's not built to do that. And he himself really wanted to establish the run. Once that wasn't working, they were like, well, fuck it. Let's just have CeeDee Lamb get 10 to 15 targets a game. And that worked really well uh, for Peyton. He's never shown that ability to do that. Even when he was still in New Orleans, it was check down bullshit and Taysom Hill bullshit. So I agree to some extent, but you're always going to be better in drafts playing the positive outcome, I would think. So for me, especially for Mims, I'm willing to play the positive outcome. But I don't think you're wrong. He's got to show it again. Like you can't just rest on your laurels forever. But in football, uh, I think a lot of those guys that are, you know, the Sean Payton, the Bill Belichick, obviously those guys are not one-to-one, -one, but you know, that tier of coach, you just get carte blanche to keep doing your thing for the most part until you get to a certain point in your life, like Bill Belichick did last year. And then all of a sudden people maybe don't want to pay that price tag of both your, your leadership and also the actual price tag. All right. Two, five, seven, oh, here. See what Indy TKS does here with his three, four, four, three build. Shaping up to be thin at every position, I would suppose, for Indy here, but he's doing something. All right. Think we could start the, uh, the tight end run here. Could also go with another running back that I think is undervalued at this point. What makes this team better right now? Bucky Irving or Hunter Henry? Given that running back is basically Dunzo, I'm going to think Bucky Irving does. I'm going to go Bucky Irving here because if I don't get Hunter Henry, I could still get Zach Ertz, new Washington tight end. I could still get the Ben Sinnott's. I could still get a Jatavian Sanders out of the rookies. Uh, maybe you could still get a John U. Smith. You can get some different outs at tight end. So we're going to try to do it that way. One QB I'm higher on than others is Penix. I think you can sling it. There's a difference between willfulness of slinging it and skill at slinging it. Penix is more willfulness of slinging it. And if you don't get that outcome in the pros, it's not great. Uh, I Penix to me, the age, the knee injury issues, and the fact that I do think he was just kind of a pure, a pure air yards merchant with the wide receiver talent, I think being better than he was at college. I, I don't want Penix, but you know, you can get him. He's the kind of guy that could go to a Denver maybe as if they miss on Knicks and, and don't trade up for McCarthy or something. Um, I think that could be an outcome potentially, but I don't know. I don't know my confidence level. Yeah, Penix last year, a 66% on target rate, which is worse than Caleb Williams. And number two out of the guys who were actually going to get drafted with capital uh, ahead of Drake May, who's at 61%. Uh, Penix last year as well. 0.25 EPA per pass is not bad. EPA under pressure was not bad. The downfield EPOs, EPA is the main thing, though. He threw deep balls more than anybody in the class, a 19% deep ball rate, but only a 0.5 EPA downfield. So for comparison, again, Caleb Williams, 1.3 on throws of 20-plus air yards. Jane Daniels, 1.6 EPA on throws of 20-plus air yards. If you're talking about Penix being about one-third the deep ball thrower of a Jane Daniels, even though he's a more willing thrower, not a great sign. Different styles of QB, like Knicks, Nix is an adult who can run an offense. Penix is a video game character um, that you can do well with on Madden on rookie mode. I, <laughs> I know that's an analogy everybody's going to love, but that's an analogy that comes to mind for me. 
Uh, Pete here scooping Zay Jones. Zay Jones, by the way, did not get cut. And also the opp opportunity probably got better. Uh, with no Calvin Ridley there. Gabe Davis comes in. Gabe Davis is not the highest target earner in the world. Uh, so Zay Jones, pick 179. Nice value pick there. Uh, Jatavian Sanders ADP is falling. It's baffling to me. He's going to go second round in most mocks. Second round tight end in the 17th round is a good value. Yeah, look, I, I mean, I think he and Sinnott are two guys that are perfectly fine 19th, 20th round. Would you rather have some vets over them? I think most of the guys we saw go off the board here, I'd probably prefer. I think I'd prefer Mayer. Uh, and Sanders, to me, you know, didn't grade out fantastically. Combine results were okay. So I don't I don't mind him. Still would prefer Sinnott, but Sanders and Sinnott are probably the exact same play, to be honest. I don't think that's a good comp. Nick's, Nick's is more of a Brock Purdy than people realize. Like he is a guy who ran with the most efficient offense out of all these guys, 0.41 EPA per drop back for him. Uh, a positive EPA under pressure for Nick's. Nick's is very skilled. He's just not, he's just not like a guy who's going to force the ball into situations that are uncomfortable, which, you know, is not a thing I want from a pro QB, but if I'm a team where the defense is good and we have skill position players that make sense, and we just don't want to fuck it up for our defense. Nick's is the perfect QB for that. McCarthy is an elevated version of Nick's where, I think he's another guy who's just not going to kill you, but also had a little more success throwing downfield and was a little more willing to do it. Uh, but he wasn't as efficient as Nick's. Nick's was really good. Uh, he went at 145 in this draft. All right. Uh, next pick coming up here. So a lot of reports of Brock Bowers to the Jets now with the signing of Tyron Smith because of the fact that they basically don't have to take alignment at that spot now. Um, Johnny Smith to me being elevated Durham Smythe is a bet I'm willing to make here as my first tight end off the board and a bad situation at tight end. So we will take Johnny Smith here. Team so far, Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels at running back, Saquon, David Montgomery, Brian Robinson, Jerome Ford, Marshawn Lloyd, and Bucky Irving. We're still live, maybe for estimate late, but we'll see if he hangs around. Justin Jefferson, Malik Neighbors, Keenan Allen, Terry McLaurin, Jordan Addison, Christian Watson, and Marvin Mims. I do love the wide receiver room. At tight end, Johnny Smith. So we have correlation. You have divisional correlations as well for guys hoping to capture a week 17 game. I think this draft went really well. And his ADP, 148.2 for Curtis Samuel. There you go. He said, I don't do a good job of separating fantasy and real life. That's fair. That's fair. I mean, look, Bo Nix is more of a real life QB than a fantasy QB for whatever it's worth. But but guys who are like parts of an offense that keep an offense running well. And for Nix, like let's say he goes to Denver and his job is just to feed, you know, Mims and keep Javante Williams, keep, you know, things ahead of schedule with the run game. If you check down to McLaughlin, that's where he has some utility. He'll probably give you a couple 20 point games just being a part of that offense. But if you put him somewhere, you know, like a Carolina last year, he's the only weapon. I think he's probably still doing better than Bryce Young because he's just better in the flow of an offense. But the results will be pretty similar because those guys are just system QBs. So, um, you know, system QBs in the right system, good. Purdy in San Francisco, good. System QBs in the wrong system, bad. Trevor Lawrence, you know, Jacksonville last year, kind of the equivalency of that. Not that he, you know, he's a little better than system QB, but that's, I think, the best comp came to mind right now. A.T. Perry undervalued, goes to pick 195 here. Only receiver in football who played actual snaps have an EPA over one last year. Uh, Audrey Gastame is still here, guys. But I think in this room, I don't think uh, I don't think Pete's guys here are going to go for him. So I'm going to take Javian Sanders and get him off the board. I'll follow our guy Jeff T's suggestion here. Of course, Jeff, one of our, our sharper regulars who travel in the world soon. So we're going to have him in chats less. So for now, I'll take advantage of him while I got him. And Jatavian, come on down, pick 198. 47 watching, maybe 47 likes. Yeah, guys, we're the legend that could here. We're going up against Pete today, both in the stream and in general in this draft room. So help us out. Hit the like button here. Again, Splash Play, a one-man band here Monday to Friday at 11 a.m. Doing drafts every day. Doing the best I can to read everything, to talk about the data, to talk about the stuff that uh, you might not have access to. Sports Info Solutions, the best analytics in the world, but uh, expensive to pay for. So um, check it out here every day, and I'll do my best for you. It's always a promise. You can disagree if you want. Just don't come in rooms and ruin every draft for me, <laughs> and then we'll be good. Wow, flight leaving in a few hours. I had to catch one last flash play. Shout out to Jeff here. Always glad to have Jeff in the chat. And again, you know, the guys who contribute here, you guys are worth your salt and your weight in gold. <laughs> your, your weight in salt. If you had looked back um, in Sodom and Gomorrah, <laughs> that's what you're worth. But appreciate all you guys here. The quality regular is always good. 
One of three is me. Only so much I could do. Enjoy the concert. Hey, that's fun. Appreciate you guys. Look, this doesn't matter. New people here, as I mentioned before, our guy Adam was a newer name and he's been one of our more valuable chat people so far in 2024. So always room for new folks here. Appreciate you guys, especially Steel City here, who I, I need to know. Steel, what's the uh, what's the Russell Wilson take here? Which one are you rooting for? Don't think there's any way Russ doesn't win that starting job, unfortunately, but I think he can get a quick hook. I think if, if they realize it's dog shit by week three, I think they're willing to pay the bonus to Fields. I personally, and I said this before, I mean, even when it was Pickett, I just felt like Russ's contract, that's that's a fall guy kind of contract. And with now there being a legit guy who they can go to, who can bring that black and gold running the football kind of offense to Pittsburgh, I would rather see that guy in an Arthur Smith offense, I think. Oh, Lurker for a while to come out of the shadows. All right, there you go. So that probably helps too, just watching the stream, getting at the flow of things. But Adam does a great job. All right, we got two tight ends of middling quality, <laughs> I'd say. The rest of the team, though, feels pretty good. See what these guys do in the next couple picks, what we get back. All right, Steel City wants Russ starter, Groom Fields. Russ could be the man. Okay. He has a shot to run an offense. I mean, he's going to be a better version of Taylor Heineke last year, I think. And Russ was a willing runner in Denver too, so he can do whatever Arthur Smith's going to give him on that front as well. I think not bad signs for sure for those guys. But Fields, you know, that electricity, I just can't believe the NFL, and it is the NFL, I get it. Uh, Estime goes 209. I was hoping we could sneak in Estime as RB7, but we're not going to be able to do that. Um, given that Estime went, J.J. McCarthy, QB3, come on down. J.J. McCarthy here, our third QB, pairing him in this theoretical configuration with Jordan Addison, with Justin Jefferson, and hoping that McCarthy, I mean, look, if he started the year, great. I don't think it's likely he starts the year with Darnold being there. McCarthy now to start, basically, and he's not dead to start either, but McCarthy has to outperform Darnold in training camp, which sounds like a basic thing to say, but like, really, that's it. If he's so much better than Darnold in training camp, he's going to win the job. And if he's so much better than Darnold in training camp, he's probably really live to be a useful fantasy play in an offense with Justin Jefferson, with Jordan Addison, with Hawkinson at some point, with Aaron Jones at running back. Um, McCarthy to Minnesota could be a perfect landing spot for him. Madison rumored to visit Vegas. Good news for Zamir. Yeah, if he's the RB2, Zamir has a good shot to upset that. If the RB2 is Benson, Brooks, even to me for Estime, I think you'll see Estime on the field and you go like, oh shit. Um, Estimate is one of these guys, man. Once he gets to a camp, some faint shot, he can be Dwayne McBride, who just beat up on nobodies. But Estimate played at Notre Dame, played real teams. Um, I think if he gets in a camp, he's going to win some people over. I don't think there's any shot. It's not a zero, not a zero probability, but I don't think it's most likely. I kind of think one, two, three is locked down, but you know, it wouldn't shock me if the Patriots trade. Would shock me if Washington trades. Like everything they're doing here has shown to me reinvigorating the offense for a rookie QB, giving him a shot to make something useful. And they didn't have to do a lot at wide receiver. Like they could just take, again, they could take Troy Franklin. They could take Malik Washington. They could take somebody and add them as a wide receiver three to replace Curtis Samuel's volume. I mean, I think they'd be, be pretty good. Clearly, you know, number one, Caleb Williams, number two, Jaden Daniels. But I guess there's the faint shot that the, the odds changing that all this stuff out there is a smoke screen. I just personally don't think that's the most likely. All right. Three, six, seven, two. We definitely do need one more tight end. Zach Ertz hanging around. I don't know that we need to take him here. I think we'd be better off taking Tank Bigsby. Uh, Tank Bigsby is RB7. Let's do that. So three, seven, seven, two at QB. We have Caleb Williams, Jane Daniels, and JJ McCarthy. And running back, Saquon Barkley, David Montgomery, Brian Robinson, Jerome Ford, Marshawn Lloyd, Bucky Irving, and Tank Bigsby. And the logic of Tank Bigsby is that they've already said they want to give him some of the volume from ATN as they tried to last year and it went terribly. But the hope, year one to year two, he can make more of it. At wide receiver, Justin Jefferson, Malik Neighbors, Keenan Allen, Terry McLaurin, Jordan Addison, Christian Watson, Marvin Mims. I think I showed good discipline at wide receiver with how much capital we spent in the first 100 picks to only take one after that. So I like that part of it. At tight end, Johnny Smith and Jatavian Sanders. So a little thin at tight end. We need one more here. I know a couple guys I wouldn't mind taking, but taking Tank as RB7 could have made the case to not do that, do two more tight ends but I don't know that there's a right answer between that. We're also get time to cook. I mean, look, they'll protect. They will protect in Pittsburgh. 
But again, to the same token, if Fields has that time behind the line and then also the ability to make a play happen out of nowhere, pretty exciting to have that as well. So we'll see. I'm, I'm curious to see it play out. But I, I, my bet would be that Russ wins the job, Fields comes on strong, then they kind of, uh, I would say, swap. Either Russ injury or Russ benching by week 10 would be my guess. Maybe week 11. Favorite win last year was Madison under like 44.5 yards, had 38 in halftime and still went under again. Madison, one of the bigger disappointments of last year for sure, especially if you got him you know, on the upward swing of steam. I was lucky to get him a lot in the 120s. Uh, but then when, I still took him here and there in the 50s and that the 50s did not feel good. The 120s, frankly, didn't feel that good. But you got the situation right. You just got the talent wrong. So that's kind of the tough part. Fundamentally, I want to get, you know, I want to get the situation right as much as the talent. Because if you get both, that works out really well. All right. I see an aged tight end in my future. Zach Ertz, continue the Washington bet. Let's do it. Zach Ertz just doing what Logan Thomas did last year with a better QB, I think would be a positive. And again, really a big vacation of targets right now with no Curtis Samuel in that team. So final team at QB, Caleb Williams, Jane Daniels, JJ McCarthy, a running back, a rare Saquon share, David Montgomery, Brian Robinson, Jerome Ford, Marshawn Lloyd, Bucky Irving, Tank Bigsby could make the case with the early draft capital of Saquon that we could have done one less running back. But I think with where the buckets went here, this much late draft capital, I didn't want to get to seven at running back. Wide receiver, Justin Jefferson, Malik Neighbors, Keenan Allen, Terry McLaurin, Jordan Addison, Christian Watson, and Marvin Mims. Pretty pure zero RB room. I like this one a lot. We have Minnesota correlation. We have guys who have real upside. like that one. Uh, honestly, from top to bottom, I like that room. And a tight end, Jonu Smith, Jatavian Sanders, Zach Ertz. Tight end is a flaw. Definitely needed four. But these guys are probably a little bit undervalued. Jonu playing that Durham Smythe role, undervalued. Ertz playing that Logan Thomas role, a little bit undervalued. Ertz is old, but if you remember for Arizona last year, he was fantasy viable until he got hurt. And then they switched things around, went McBride's way. So I like to see him. Team came better pretty well. In case your boy Senate goes off the road, time to dabble in Theo Johnson. Yeah, Theo Johnson, a historical RAS performance for him, but not a guy we got in this one. So there we go. That is team number 35 for me. Of course, more coming up tomorrow. So uh, first of all, the plugs, subscribe down below. Splash play new drafts every day, Monday to Friday at 11 a.m. And again, I'm just going to tell you like it is here. I'm not going to suck up to, to people. and <laughs> I'm just going to do the drafts that we try to do here every day with the best info, with the best takes, correlating. That's always the goal here to make good teams and to make entertaining streams. Those things are one go hand in hand, 1A and 1B. So that's the promise here on Splash Play. Probably uh, the bad news, the winning streak ended. Actually, we'll show you guys real fast our results overall for the month though. But in March, still very much in the black, plus 28 units so far in March. Have seen some guys, we got Jason in the chat, signed up recently as well. Our other guy, Jason, one of the biggest winners we've had it probably. So check it out for yourself. Again, use that promo code SPLASH on there to save 50% off your first month or even off your first year. That means getting all of our data for one under, under 100 bucks. But the winningest data from the winningest sports books around the world uh, that's what we give you at probably to price bets to find the best bets. And with March Madness coming up this week, you're going to want it to get in some good bets. So do it for yourself. That is my baby. Best way to support the show. And also leave five stars interview on there if you want to be entered for the next run, next run of guest hosting spots where Robert Griffin's heard. I saw got an entry in. We got some new names coming up. And again, Chunk the Deuce coming up at some point soon. So Chunk, please DM me at Chris Spax. Another NBA slate tonight, $4.150 max. I'll be doing it. Actually, not maxing it out today because, frankly, the bankroll's getting a little bit low. It took a beating last week in NBA. Uh, we have to, you know, that's just me being real with you as always here. But still a fun tournament to be in. I'll be throwing in, I think, 75 entries tonight into that one. So check it out for yourself. So cast like 15% off with the promo code SPLASH. All their data, all their Sims, tools, and all of that. And, of course, Underdog, the preeminent sponsor of this show. New drafts every Monday to Friday, and you should be doing them, not doing them with me, but do them, <laughs> do them in parallel on Underdog with that promo code SPLASH. Double your deposit up to 100 bucks and come along for the ride. Shout out the new members as well. Some names fall off, some names go on. But YouTube can support this channel every day. Hit the join button down below. $49 a month will get you access to the channel, custom VIP badges, custom streams coming up too, along with the Spags rankings coming up after the, well, I think after the draft. <laughs> I have put together a lot of it. So maybe I'll give you guys a preview of them, but I don't know that they'll be, I wouldn't want you guys using my rankings for underdog right now, because I just think things are going to move around with draft capital that I don't want to put you guys in a bad spot. It's really the biggest holdup right now, uh, but I am putting in little write-ups every day for the Spags rankings. So that's coming out soon and game responsibly do all that too. Back tomorrow with more. So appreciate all you guys being here with me. Uh, have a good flight to our guy, Jeff. Uh, have a great week to all of you guys and come back and hang tomorrow at 11 a.m. I will see you guys then. Enjoy your days and good luck. Bye. Mm -hmm.